Hello all, this is Dan Brown with Dan Brown CGI, and this is a time lapse for creating the warp conduit effect that I made in the Adamant Dropout video. I started by creating the, uh, I guess I call it an apparatus, I don't know, it's a, it's a rig using nothing but empties, which enables me to control the camera and the ship and what the, ship, what the camera is looking at in relation to the ship. It also is all parented to what's called the master control, main control. In this case, I did this wrong at first. And the look, uh, the look uh, empty there should be parented to the ship empty. But in this case, I, I fixed it later. But in the moment, in that moment, I did it wrong. And so there you go. Now I'm creating the backdrop. I just dropped in one of my uh, skies. And now I'm creating the actual conduit geometry. It's just a, a cylinder that's UV unwrapped using cylindrical projection. Took a couple of tries to get it right. After doing the UV unwrapping, I then twist the geometry using uh, proportional editing turned on. I had to make sure that the camera clipping was set to one kilometer. And there you go. That gives a spiral effect. You don't have to do it, it's optional, but it's mostly for a visual. If a, it's important to do that after the UV unwrapping. Now going into the shader for the, for the actual uh, conduit. I was doing a little experimenting here to see what I could do. Um, see what looks right start with you use a noise texture now this noise texture there's also a mistake here I should have put the noise texture uh, the vector as UV um, mapped that way it would have spiraled with the displaced um, geometry and I'm using a displacement map with a displacement modifier to create the bubbly uh, ripply effect which will using the refraction BD BSDF shader will cause a slight distortion in the stars as you can see here in the background as it spirals by really fast it'll blur creating the impression that you're going really fast now I'm just creating a color ramp and there you go the shader is almost done at this point uh, it was that simple it wasn't a very complex shader to do sometimes I find that extremely complex node setups sometimes could be a little too convoluted and uh, sometimes the simplest approach is the best actually oftentimes it is so now I'm keyframing and there you go there's the initial animation now I spin it now I go into the curves uh, window and you edit the curves I add a cycles effect, which is just repeating it over and over again. But since I didn't do anything but the any animation except on Y axes, I ended up just using the Y axes to, for simplicity's sake, so it didn't get gets rid of some clutter. Speed up the animation by moving the keyframes because you want it to go by super fast. That's a personal taste as well. If you want it to go by slower or faster, that's up to you. Now I took the look. And this is the benefit that comes from this. I have a look uh, empty, and what it does is I add a noise modifier after adding a keyframe for location, and it gives a jiggly effect to the camera, as if the camera's shaking because of the great speed. I remember somebody asked me about that, and that's it. Now I had an issue I'm correcting with the UV mapping. I'm gonna double the UV map in order to uh, create the displacement effect a little better and affect it. I was trying to get rid of those seams, but then I realized they were going by so fast that they actually might create a, n a nifty effect that I liked, so I kept the seams. Now what we do is we I have to reparent the look to the ship uh, empty, and now you can move the look uh, empty around and the ship empty and control where the where the 
where the camera is looking. It's always locked onto the ship, but it doesn't have to be centered perfectly to the ship. And the look empty can shake, giving the camera shake, but at the same time, the ship doesn't shake. It's all relative, but all parented to each other, so it's a nice compact package that works. You can move everything around. And now we're going to test render to see what it looks like. I had to back out for a second because there was too much going on to save render time. I dropped down on some detail. Set everything to 512 and that'll get rid of some of the flicker that happens with the capture. And I learned that during this video. So we're getting there. Uh, this is a nice effect if that's what people want, but that is not the final effect that I want uh, for my look, but it, it works. So here's the lens distortion effect for post-production. Gives this slight more blurry effect. More warped and weird. Now we're taking the Fresnel effect. And I use the Fresnel effect to uh, adjust. As you can see, the lower the Fresnel effect, the more the stars appear. I wanted 10 as the final number. And I adjusted the color ramp a little more to give me a more mottled, uh, bubbly look. And that'll blow by really fast. What I did not do was add the UV uh, input to the uh, color ramp, to the noise texture. And that would have ideally really made it sing, um, but it, I didn't do that. I forgot during this tutorial or video, uh, time lapse, but that's it. That is the effect. It's a relatively simple, took me a weekend to figure out, and it, it, it's a relatively simple approach to how I do it, and it, it works. It's, I mean, there's probably a better way to do it, but this provides enough control that you can make a, make a warp conduit. Here's the final nodes, and here is the OpenGL animation. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is Dan Brown signing off. Hope everyone's doing all right. Dan Brown CGI. <laughs>